Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here this morning. Um, I want to have us go on a space journey. Imagine that uh, back in 2004, the Hubble Space Tel Telescope was looking into space into a region that was complete darkness. Uh, they focused on this area for two days in what they called deep field research, the idea of, to see if they could see anything over a timed, exposed uh, photograph aspect. And this is what they saw after two days. In this photograph, scientists estimate they are 10,000 galaxies. To give you an idea, a galaxy has about a billion or so plus stars in them. And this is in a small segment. Now, it's hard to get our mind wrapped around what we're seeing here today and understand that, but we can clearly see it, can't we? So I'd like to have us go through a journey of paralleling along this idea of space travel, so to speak, to the area of IoT. As we think about these aspects of galaxies within different business applications, you can see you can look at healthcare, agricultural, office space, and other areas in which you can apply IoT in. And while they're with a galaxy similar to IoT, there are similarities and there are also differences between the two. For this morning's discussion, I want to focus strictly on the healthcare galaxy and drill into that a little bit further. If we kind of go into a further into a solar system, for today's discussion, I'd like to talk about uh, how we're looking at IoT with maintenance, building systems, clinical environments, patient experience, and security. And on our way in our journey, we might run a few, uh, past a few strangers on the way, zooming in on the Earth, coming in into uh, the, the planet here, and eventually all of the IoT comes to our desktop so we can start to see the massiveness of it. So it helps to see something we're familiar with to learn more about something that we're learning about. So how do we connect these ideas of the galaxies and the, and the universe to the IoT? And we have to think about what is the job we're trying to accomplish, and that is data is useless unless we're turning a hypothesis into some kind of repeatable principle that leads to some sort of action. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Uh, as we look at another defining principle what IoT is, it's, it's so discussed today, but let's talk about, again, the definition is simply that it's an ecosystem of connecting devices to the internet for the purpose of using network effect to the development of solutions to perform jobs to be done. So as we look at where it is at and moving in the future, we talked about exponential growth last night. Well, that's the same way it's going in the IoT market. You see how the spin and the investment is going forward by 2025. We see the trajectory is 1.5 billion by 2025 by some experts. So it is here, it is moving forward, it is here to stay. And we're at a very exciting point in time and I'll demonstrate that here in a moment. Ecosystem for an IoT uh, infrastructure is really pretty straightforward and that is there are a series of edge devices or devices that are generating, collecting, getting data and moving those points from a facility infrastructure perspective out to some kind of wireless wired connection to eventually data loggers or gateways that are gathering this information to then push it out to a cloud environment in which on a cloud environment there are platforms that are laying on that cloud environment to be able to perform various aspects of artificial intelligence and machine learning. As you look at the big picture of this, this is what it really simply looks like. Uh, it's, it's pretty massive when you think about how big it is. In fact, they think by the end of 2020 there'll be 20 billion uh, interconnected IoT devices. So we've talked a little bit about already about IoT and healthcare, but very basically, again, it's looking at how do sensors, and I'm talking more about the sensor world of things, not just strictly data itself by sis other systems, but sensors themselves. Uh, how do sensors go work out throughout the home? How do they look at more in the body and embedded in the body as well? And how does this all come together to give feedback to people uh, that are trying to make decisions on monitoring and analysis? So here's a way that I wanted to make sure to be able, to, if you could see IoT in action, what would it look like? Well, here's a video that helps show that, I believe. The Internet of Things is becoming a big part of running modern healthcare facilities. Let's take a look at how. IoT creates an ecosystem of Internet-connected devices in order to achieve various tasks in the most efficient way. The system works best when it's working for staff, facility operators, and patients in unison, be it locating staff, alerting of a patient arrival, setting comfortable waiting room temperatures, new bed availability, or real-time patient status. IoT can give thousands of real-time data points to aid efficient decision-making. 
In order to make sense of all of this data, AI and machine learning help sort through what's important now and what might be important in the future, as well as offering analytics and trending information for future planning. With advances in technology happening every day, the possibilities for improving care, operational efficiencies, and patient well-being today are endless. Until tomorrow, when we do it all again. So let's look at the benefits of IoT in healthcare. Uh, five areas I'm going to cover is building systems, patient experience, uh, clinic, uh, critical environments, maintenance, and security. As we look at a building system, there are various aspects that IoT has a very strong place to play in the future now. And these are some areas that we're talking about, HVAC, lighting, electrical demand, people movement, safety, and analytics and management around the building system itself. So as we think about smart IoT in buildings, we can think about how this is going to impact the environment of the patients that are there to optimize their experience and make it a much better place to stay because of the control and environment that they're working in. It also helps us to make sure there's occupant safety in place and also to be able to look at asset optimization. It will also help in the idea of having smarter buildings by knowing the financial performance of those buildings, energy consumption, and all these things drilled in together. And as we see all the benefits of how this comes together, we'll have quality outcomes, patient experience will improve, uh, operational efficiency, <clears throat> excuse me, finance and, uh, activities, and then finally, a workforce culture engagement optimization, all this tying it together in a much more holistic sort of way. So I'm gonna cover now a couple areas of IoT in healthcare, and that's IoT and lighting. A lot of the discussion has happened in that market, in that space, but I think that's still a big role that will play over time, and that is having smart light fixtures that are relaying data, and uh, it's a perfect conduit as a, as a matrix of fixtures in a space to be able to do that. And a lot of companies are working on that and doing that today and researching it further. Uh, those are embedded into the sensors. Uh, they further help in the environment of providing optimized light for an experience for patients as far as patient care is concerned. Uh, it also, if, if you think about lighting, that's a very, very important aspect of how it creates the mood, the healing environment, and all the factors that that, that, that helps to contribute toward. So uh, as you look at also from the standpoint of lighting, increases task performance, the opportunity for controls to increase efficiency and capabilities, and the ability to control LED lighting leads to the lighting only in the appropriate places. I want to take some focus now on motors. Uh, that seems like, why would you look at IoT and motors? But did you know that 50% of the energy, electrical energy consumed is from motors? And if you think about it, if you're trying to reduce electrical energy, you want to put some focus on motors. Motors drives a lot of things, air conditioning, air handlers, chillers, boiler fans, uh, refrigeration units. So if you could take a look at that and understand Clearly what that issue is, you're going to also not only save energy, but also deal with your business risk. Because those motors, when they go offline, usually mean that's a consequence for care. So in the process, I'm kind of applying it to this motors and machine learning. Machine learning really is a science of getting computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. So uh, the idea is that to learn and experience through that and rewrite the programs to optimize itself. So kind of taking you through a scenario here, uh, as you look at the motor itself, it's equipped with uh, multiple sensors. This could be vibration, temperature, energy usage, sort of get an idea of collecting data about the motor. Then that information goes into a database, into the cloud, and then there's an analysis performed on the data 24-7. After a period of time, it learns about that motor's behavior over different operating conditions, and it sort of puts its fingerprints all over it to know this is how this motor should perform and how it should work. And then if somebody's not working right, then it will detect that and be a problem that you can be alerted to a problem. The area, other area is patient experience. We've, we've talked about that a lot already, but simply just to say this is coming and more of it will be monitoring the patient to improve that experience. Real-time location services, we've heard a lot about that already. That will continue to grow how important that is to tracking patients, assets, services related to better treatment modalities, also for the idea of monitoring patients as they move through the facility so you're sure that they are in a safe environment and not elope from your space to some other place they're not supposed to be. So as you look at a patient sensor overview, there's several things to think about how this all works here. We talked about smartphones, sensors, all kinds of uh, vital sensors, and even environmental sensors to know what's going on. 
So from there, you look at your daily life. It learns like the motor I use an example of to the event detection. It moves into individual optimizing kind of how your daily life looks. And then that goes through the events into the environment and then looks at what you're doing specifically that eventually applies to the healthcare provider in which you're interfacing with. So kind of think about the patient sensory overview uh, topo map of how that will look in the future and even today. So critical environments, this is an area that I'm really focusing on is how to get your mind wrapped around that. So when you think about monitoring equipment in an operating room, um, the sensor technology is, is dramatically changed quite a bit. I'll bring these both of me here now. So uh, this is a pretty recent development. This is actually a, a sensor chip. I mean, it's purposely small. You can't really see it, but that's the point. The point is that they're becoming so small, this sensor chip that measures just temperature, but I can simply put it on a little sticky and it sticks wherever you put it, and it has a very multi-year life associated with it. So you imagine how big they used to be to how small they're getting. When the form factor gets to be this small and the cost price drops, it becomes much and much more plausible to use it. And then within the surgical environment itself, as you're looking at monitoring temperature, humidity, pressure, and air change rates, there are these integrated sensors that are going in now. It's literally, you just put this in the operating room itself, and it will monitor all those things together. But besides that, it includes a couple other things like monitoring uh, volatile organic compounds, VOCs. So why would you want to know that? Well, in the case there was escape anesthesia gases, there would be a sensor for that. We, wanted, we don't want our, our staff in the surgery suite to be breathing the same air that your patient is breathing. So uh, you would know if there's an issue with that and track it. Also, there's an issue with OSHA with uh, uh, cauterization, smoke plume issues, so they want to make sure that those are properly being evacuated. And then finally, if you think about, would you want to know if there was a patient on the operating room table? So if you think about, it, you have all these environmental conditions, as well as the ability to know when a patient was in, on the operating room table, and so you could then say, this is exactly what the environment was like when they were there. But as you think about that single data point of a patient on a, pa on a table, there's other people who like to have that data as well. And that's where the IoT crosswalk starts to happen to where, you know, I might be looking at throughput through the operating room, how long is a person on a table by a surgeon for a procedure. So all these things start to work together in the surgical environment. So this is where now equipment in the operating room is starting to interconnect. And this whole idea we talked about earlier about medical equipment interoperability is happening more and more often. We're also seeing that um, it is really helping to educate the staff of the medical history and how they're operating, working with the patient. Uh, they're also looking to be able to track information, even about appliances <clears throat> in the surgery suite, excuse me. <clears throat> and it's related to uh, you know, sutures, um, any kind of clamping devices. Now, today, you have to do complete inventory before the surgery. Then after the surgery, you have to make sure all of your equipment is accounted for because, of course, you don't want to have something missing when you perform a surgery. But now they have the ability to track every piece of equipment to make sure that they know what goes in the operating room and what comes out of it. And so then we have this great idea of critical environments being real time to know what our situation is going and what's happening. So next up is maintenance. Um, this is where I think it's going to be another big game changer, and that is in the predictive maintenance space. Uh, right now, we do a lot of preventive maintenance. And that is a scheduled activity to do something that a manufacturer recommends that we do. Predictive is only working on something when it needs to be worked on. So data will come in and say, now it is time to work on this, but not any moment before or after that. So your maintenance optimization will have to happen much more effectively and dramatically that way. So I, I think that, you know, it could be some day say, well, why are you doing preventive maintenance? That's kind of old school. We do predictive maintenance for how we do with maintenance at our facilities. So there's a lot of advantages that you can see of managing your assets, really putting in the right amount of maintenance, having documentation of it real time, and doing a much more effective job in carrying that out. So finally, talking about security, this is from IoT security. And this is a big area we have to continue to invest within uh, IoT because this is an area of concern with many people. So as you look at it, by 2020, 25% of enterprise attacks will involve IoT. Why is that? Because that's an expanding growth area, so that's where hackers are and people are going to try to have their vulnerabilities attack. Second is that there is going to be a 10% of the IT budget is going to go to IoT security related spend as the prediction. Also, 50% of IoT implementations will use some sort of cloud security. 
So just the sheer number of devices sort of make it an automatic target that will take a lot of due diligence and systems to be able to watch, monitor, and make sure that system is working effectively as it can. But again, how could it do that with so much information, so many data points, uh, Internet of Things there? Well, again, they'll, they'll have to keep in spending more money to invest in that. This is an interesting chart that shows, uh, if you look at the bottom orange bars, it shows you what people are spending for IoT security related to year by year, but the, the line represents actually how many devices are being in place. You can see there's a clear gap between spend versus what they should be spending in IoT security. So that's, again, where artificial intelligence comes in or machine learning comes in, and that is that will enhance the security environment as well, looking for those vulnerabilities and making sure that you can make it as secure as you possibly can. So here's the, here's the big slide that tells you, okay, what are your challenges? So you've got multiple internal parties you have to work with to get this to start within your, within your companies. Until you get this figured out, who are the decision makers? How do I get them on board? How do I meet with them? And how do I get them comfortable with the idea of us moving forward with the strategy? Next is you have to really understand or even create the IoT uh, strategy culture for your company. So how do you go about doing that? Uh, is, your, is your leadership engaged? And they think it's important because that's where it starts for them to resource the growth of this in the first place. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the, the issue will come up with cost, of course. How much is it going to cost to do this? How much am I going to spend? Uh, try to start out small, learn fast, and come up with some quick wins. So as I mentioned earlier, everybody has to monitor critical environments, right? So the idea is, well, maybe you start there when I'm talking about the built space environment. Or maybe I talk about monitoring motors or things that are very kind of clear cut and easy to implement and demonstrate they'd be successful. Uh, how do you deal with legacy systems? So those are always to be contended with. I have data in this system, I have this over here, so how do I best manage that? And finally, you have to be real with security and how do you address that in the best possible way? So I hope that you could kind of travel along with me to compare what we can see, which seems kind of unbelievable to get your mind wrapped around, and to apply that into some sort of a way that makes a little bit more sense of all the things we've been consuming as far as information is concerned to actually take action and do something what we're talking about. You know, back in uh, about six, three months ago, my grandson had his uh, fifth birthday and he got a little Buzz Lightyear toy and it has, of course, the button you push on the uh, character and he says, to affinity and beyond. So really what we're looking at today is the same idea, is that IoT will become visible if we just look, see, and are astonished. Thank you.